Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. I've got a couple of Beretta 92s on the table here. The 92 family has been around for a very long time. There's quite a few variations of it. The one that's being shown right here is the new Compact, which is really the first of that size in this family. The 92 family encompasses the M9 series, the 96, which is the 40 equivalent, and there's been uh, quite a few different models, variations, and color patterns over the years. These two are the Inox. So let's pick them up and let's talk about them. First thing we'll do is verify they're unloaded, which is easy to do on these because with the open slide, it's really easy to see into the chamber. Unloaded as well. That characteristic, by the way, is one of the things that makes these somewhat unique is that open slide. And you'll often hear people talk about that that's a bad thing because stuff's going to get in there and jam it up. I have heard lots and lots of it could happen stories, but honestly I've never heard an it did happen story. So I, you know, I guess it's feasible, something could get in there and bung it up, but at the same time it's so open if something did you'll pull it back and shake whatever it is out. So I haven't really heard of any instances where that's caused a functional problem. Now you can see, as I hold these up next to each other, what makes the compact the compact. It's shorter. It, it's smaller in every dimension. It's not massively shorter. This doesn't turn it into an ankle gun, but it is noticeably shorter. So the full size, which is here, or the standard one, the original one, is 8.5 inches long, and the compact, which is up here, is 7.75 inches. So this is a 3 quarter inch length difference. That difference is actually the biggest of all of the differences that you're going to find on these. From a height perspective, I've got them with no magazine at the moment because it makes it a little clearer. You can see there's about a quarter, less, a little less than a quarter inch difference between the two in height. And when I put a full size magazine in them, the, the compact, by the way, is 5.25 inches and the full size is 5.4. Now you might be thinking, well, that, that's way more than a quarter inch. Well, it comes down to the magazines. When you put the magazines in, they've got a pinky extender. And the pinky extender takes up a significant amount of space and brings it into that much closer dimension. You can buy flat base plates to put on the magazines, and then now you're going to be closer to that half inch difference that it appeared without the magazines. But they don't offer it in the box without the pinky extender. They all come with the pinky extender. The flat base plates are 7 or $8 a piece. They're easy to buy and put on. And what you would end up with is the height of the magazine being up right about here. So let me try to turn it a little bit so you can kind of see the difference. I'm trying to keep the tops of them roughly level. You'll see that it's really the thickness of a base plate is the difference from the, the tip of the pinky extender down. But if you look at the back end of the magazine, which would be roughly where a flat base plate would be, there's a little bit of a ramp on it, you can see you get a more significant difference. It's kind of strange that they came out with the compact and put only pinky extender magazines in the box, so you're really not getting the full effect of the compact from the height dimension. Thickness, they're both the same. They're 1.5 inches thick. The guns like this, these DASA classic hammer guns, tend to be fat little things but it does fit very well in your hand whether you've got the compact in your hand with the pinky extender on it two finger grip if you didn't have the extender and three with it or whether you're holding on to the standard size one which is basically a full three finger grip they both fit right so they may look to be a little bit fat of course you'd notice it if you were carrying it inside the waistband but when you put it in your hand it just fits right and that's one thing about this entire line of pistols and all the variations they're pleasant to hold. They just fit in your hand well, and they want to just get right on target real easily. They're comfortable to hold. With the weight of them, it's 33.3 inches or 33.3 ounces on the full size, and 31.6 on the compact. So you don't really shed a whole lot of weight, but that weight controls recoil very well. These guns are guns that snap right back onto the target. They're ready to go again. These are so easy to shoot well. This is one of those few guns, kind of like the PPQ, that if you want to miss, you have to try. Otherwise, this thing knows where the target is and it'll help you find it. And before I forget, when I move on to other things on the guns, we'll put links to the, the full reviews to both of these. So this is kind of just a comparison, so I'm not going to go into all of the details of each one of them. Mostly what's different between the two of them. Now, from a sights perspective, 
they've got dovetailed rear sights. They're a three dot sight and they're red. And the front sight is a recessed. It's machined into the slide body and it's red. They're nicely done quality sights, but they're hard to see. The red fades in with the black and you can even see it here on the camera where the front sight is kind of fading out a little bit. They're probably would do better with a dot of white paint put on the actual dots themselves to get them to stand out. Now the rear sight can be replaced, it's dovetailed, but the front sight, if I bring it up, is actually machined into the slide as I mentioned a little bit earlier. So it is what it is, you're not going to do anything about changing that unless you get into drilling and cutting. There are variants of this series that do have replaceable front sights, but not the Inoxes. And I'm not sure why they did that specifically with the Inoxes. There are other variations, like especially like the M9 series, you can, they have a screw. You can unscrew the sight or a dovetail, depending on the version, and rather easily replace it. So these are beautiful guns. This particular one is saddled with less than beautiful sights. And of course, the FS series is getting closer to the original, the original M92 the from the first generation. One other thing you'll notice that's different between the two of them, you can see it right there, is the profile of the dust cover. The dust cover on the compact has a square shape and it has a Picatinny rail, which that also leads to a square front of the trigger guard, whereas the original one has more curvature to it. It's kind of got nice lines. One of the things you'll see about these particular guns is they're very recognizable. Anybody that's had any contact with any Hollywood movies has probably seen one of the originals or one of its variants. And this gun, this particular profile right here, is often used to, to represent a gun. When you see a silhouette of a gun on a sign or something like that, or on some sort of pamphlet, it's often this silhouette. Unfortunately, usually with a red circle and a line through it. But this is a very recognizable silhouette. Both of them have the safety that is mounted on the slide and it acts as a decocker. This particular version, both of these, use the safety decocker. So it locks down and acts as a safety in addition to a decocker. Both of these are drop safe. They have a drop safety piston as well as if I just pull the hammer back, you'll see that the safety is now basically a solid ball. When I put it on, you can see, and it's kind of hard to see, see that little pin? That's a transfer pin. When I flick the safety down, it's a solid ball. If this gun is dropped and it's in the safe position, even if the fire control group and the drop safety both concurrently fail catastrophically, that is going to prevent the hammer from hitting the firing pin. It's just hitting a solid metal ball at that point. They both have that. And both of these can be converted to the decocker only. And the only difference is instead of locking down in a safe position like this, it'll flip back up. The gun is still safe because you have the drop safety, but that is an option available to you. And there's a few versions that are out there that come from the factory that way. So you can either buy the parts and convert it. It's a bit of work. Or you can buy the version that comes from the factory that way from day one. A couple other things I didn't mention yet is capacity. The full size has a 15 round magazine. It's also available in 10 round for those that are stuck in a restrictive state. The compact you shed two rounds. So you get a 13 round magazine with or without the pinky extender. The pinky extender is just a base plate. Uh, but then there's also the 10 round option. Now keeping in mind it would be a shorter 10 round magazine. So the 10 round magazines for this would hang out the bottom. Now, from a magazine interchangeability, the compact magazines won't work in the full size, they're too short. But the full size magazines will work in the compact, they'll just hang down. And like a lot of situations like that, you just want to be careful about getting overly exuberant, slamming the magazine in. You don't want to damage anything, but they will function and they will function reliably. Taking both of these to the range is a pleasure. It didn't matter which one of these I had in my hand, other than having difficulty seeing the sights. They are just a lot of fun to shoot. The recoil impulse on them is very smooth. And it's just a, a overall nice experience shooting one of these. I really haven't had anybody that's tried any of these 92 series that I've had that didn't like shooting it. Now, from a carry perspective, they might be a little big, they might be a little heavy. You might want some of the polymer wonders that are out there that are easier to stash in a pocket or wherever it is you want to put the gun. 
but from a day at the range or a home defense gun, these really can't be beat. So whether I've got the full size like this one or the compact, they're consistent. So it doesn't matter which order you're picking them up and handling them in from a trigger perspective, you really won't be able to tell the difference. They did that part right. And that's important because one of the things about the 92 series that kind of stands apart from many others is the trigger is so nice. It's just smooth and consistent. Consistency can be a key so that it breaks at the same point every time. Makes it a lot easier for you to do good follow-up shots. Once you get used to the trigger, you can just kind of cycle through it and just keep using the same spot on the target over and over again. Now, one of the questions that will come up is, okay, which one should I get or why would I get one or the other? Well, in this particular setup, the compact doesn't shave a huge amount of size, but it does add a rail. And in a lot of carry situations, you're wanting to put a lighter or a laser or something like that on it. So the rail on the compact may be one of the deciding factors. If you're going to carry it, you might go with the compact because you can also either put the larger magazine in it or even just use the existing magazine. This will make a perfectly good home defense gun. So if you're carrying and you have neither, the compact might give you the best of both worlds. If you've got this one, one of the variations of the full size that doesn't have a rail, and you're looking to carry, you might want to consider the compact, which adds a rail and a little bit less size. But the standing out of absolutely got to buy one or the other between these two isn't as significant as it is with other variations of different firearms that we've handled. Before I wrap up, yeah, I just want to take a second to thank those that subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, comment, and you know, give us likes. That really helps with our stats. So please you know, subscribe, give us a like, share our videos. And we also want to thank those that support us on Patreon. As YouTube becomes more and more unfriendly towards gun channels, you know, Patreon starts to really be a help. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, of course. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, kind of pretty much everywhere. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.